Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with some more horse racing tips, mainly for, well, for Stratford and also proof of the football bet that I have placed rather than you having to scroll down to this to the description in the previous video. So I never normally touch Stratford with a barge pole, but I thought I'd have a quick look. I'll tell you what, there's some quite interesting angles because I always class Stratford as um, a front runner's favouring track. Um, there's an awful lot of horses that have that are making their reappearances after long absences or rent and also with question marks over them as well. Um, there's several favorites um, that are coming off of big breaks, obviously because the, the, the season's kind of starting again. Um, there's an awful lot of horses that um, are wearing first time headgear. Um, and there's an awful lot of fancied horses that would prefer much further so that's my general take on why i've gone for the selections that i have done because i think they are more suited um to today's conditions than some of the other horses they may strip fitter than some of the other horses um and there are question marks over the fancied runners however the more fancied runners are probably better class horses so we're hoping for some of the more fancied horses to underperform in general. And I've given you some of the reasons why. So um, I'm also going to talk you through the football bit very briefly. But I'm going to go through the horses. So let me get into it. So I've actually staked tenor. There's no real structure, if I'm being honest, to my entire staking plan. I've probably gone over the top when it comes to Saturday. But why not test your luck? But these are my bets, as I've said in all the videos. You do not have to follow me blind. You look at my selection. Do you agree with me? If yes, maybe place the same bet. Maybe add the horse to your own bets. Yeah, but this is purely my opinion. Some days will have fantastic days. Generally, we'll have shockers. Um, and like we have done recently. So let me get into it. So what I've had is a 20 pence each way, lucky 15. And then I've gone for 50 pence each way singles. That takes it to a tenner. So the first selection is Coupe de Gold at 9-1 to one in the 140 at Stratford. So straight away, this horse is a bit of a monkey, I'll be honest. Um, I believe Connections have bought this horse. I think it's Mrs. C. Williams. I, I'm guessing it's the wife of the trainer. So Evan Williams is the trainer and the jockey is Eleanor Williams claiming seven. It's a female jockey's handicap. This horse is a monkey. Uh, but there's an awful lot of fancied horses in the race that want much further and are coming off relatively long breaks. Um, this horse has run recently. Uh, in fact, I believe it's run recently. Um, I know I've I know I've definitely gone for this horse basically because it's more suited to the trip than anything else, and in my opinion, it's more likely to run its race. Than a lot of the others nine to one i think is too big but we've also got best odds guaranteed now because i placed this bet literally 10 minutes ago and it's now 10 past uh, and it's at 10 past 11 11 minutes past nine so i've got best odds guaranteed um i think this horse will either make the running or be at least second the best part of the way around ideally what i would like to see is this horse goes straight to the front the jockey able to ride but sets really slow fractions why because i believe this horse is more suited to today's distance uh, pretty much two mile um, if it sets a slow pace it should hopefully um be too quick for the horses that want further and therefore it should turn into a little bit of a sprint towards the finish and i think this horse may have a little bit too much toe for some of the horses nine to one in my opinion is too big that's my reasoning behind that selection. The second selection is Tiger by the tail at five to one in the 4.15 at Stratford. Once again, placed after nine o'clock. So the five to one, if it gets bigger, will get best odds guaranteed. There are so many question marks, once again, of horses in this race. Um, I think this one, this, this horse, what, what it was, it was trained by Ollie Murphy two years ago and it achieved decent racing post ratings um even compared to the favorite in this race this horse has higher racing post ratings than the, than the favorite in this race does it have as much potential as the favorite probably not but there are a lot of question marks especially in this race over the more fancied horses um this horse 
the Racing Post said about it, has it improved since it was trained by Ollie Murphy? It doesn't have to. It needs to be no worse than the same horse than what it was then, because then it's got every chance. It's been point to point and, and it's been doing OK. Bearing in mind, sometimes they've even been two runner races. So that tells you a lot about the point to pointing. So now it's gone to, well, sorry, now it's with, I think, I believe his name's Tom Ellis. But they've sent it back hurdling. Um, could they be getting it fit over hurdling, ready for a, a chasing campaign? Yeah, possibly. But I think today's race is within um, its compass of taking it. Um, once again, it's more suited to today's distance conditions than a lot of the other horses. And I think it's got every chance. Five to one. I think it's a seven runner race, uh, which is not ideal. I may be wrong. Let me, in fact, let me just check well, rather than saying I'm not sure. So, yeah, seven runners on soft ground. So the favourite is Mickey Moto by Martin Keeley. Hasn't run for 300 days. The second favourite is, well, it's been a bit on the drift, is Night Duty. Um, hasn't run for 559 days. Silver Thorn hasn't run for 201 days. So Tiger by the Tail, I've gone for it because I, I think it's, Although it's coming off a break as well, 146 days point to point, 211 days um, its last under rules run. But I believe this horse is the best horse currently in the race. It's got a race. It's got an official rating of 118. Is it up to that mark? I don't know. We're going to find out. But I don't see why not. Um, it's got quite a lot of experience over different um, rules. So let's just see what happens. The third selection is my granny Lily. And just give me a second and I'll fully explain about the horse. I'm just clicking on my laptop while I talk on the Amazon Fire. So it's over two mile, two and a half furlong. My granny Lily is currently 14 to 1. So this horse, so the favourite in this race is called Any Biscuits, trained by Harry Durham. Um, it's won its last two races. But Charlie, why do you fancy it? Well, the favourite. It's coming up a break of 547 days. You're heading towards, I know it's still up, a year and a half off the track. May it come back a much stronger, better horse? Maybe it might do. The second favourite sailed away, 216 days. Esmeralda, third favourite, nearly 200 days. Yeah, I did look at begin the look, but I just can't back it because it's a hurdle race and this horse has done all it's running recently over chase fences. So my granny Lily is coming off a break of 181 days. It was mainly campaigned over this, around this distance. Um, my granny Lily um, is ridden by David Noonan. There are a lot of questionable um, or inexperienced jockeys in this race. Um, I think David Noonan is a decent jockey. Nig uh, <laughs> I was about to say Nigel Hawke has won coming off a break. No, he hasn't. Uh, my granny Lily had a break of 57 days and won after the reappearance. Um, we are taking fitness on trust, but I think, once again, it should be suited by this distance and should have every chance. I do not know what kind of fitness this horse has got, if it's unfit and we're struggling. And the final selection is probably the more obvious selection. It, this horse should run its race. This horse is called Super Sunrise at 5-1 to one in the 5.20 at Stratford, Paying four places instead of three. So this horse is trained by Nigel Twiston Davis. The jockey on board over this two mile six and a half furlong distance is Finn Lambert. Capable jockey. It's currently five to one. Uh, it's had two recent runs. It's also, this is its second run after a wind operation. It ran quite well, or well, it came second after the wind operation. As I always say, or I've said it, well, not always, in this particular video, the um, a lot of the ho other horses haven't run recently. This horse has been running around this distance for a while now, gets a distance well, it's up a rating of 89. It's only an eight-year-old, so it's not like long in the tooth or anything like that. There are some, well, the vast majority of horses are younger in this race. Uh, the going is soft. This horse is fine on soft ground. I expect this horse to be up with the pace and be hard to beat. Nigel Twiston Davis is well renowned for having his horses fit. So this horse is guaranteed to be fit because it's coming off a wind operation. It's ran, this is its second run. Um, the last run was, was decent. So it's got fitness massively on its side. 
I believe they're going to use that to its advantage. Finn Lambert is a more than capable jockey. He's claiming three, and that's the reason for going for it. Um, so that is, in fact, it's not so. So this is the football bet. So the football bet. So I've, it's still a tenner. It's seven pound over two and a half goals, two pound over three and a half goals treble, and a pound slightly different bet. So what I've gone for is I've gone for the more fancied team or the favourite, as you call it, in the match, basically to come f to win coming from behind. So basically these teams to go a goal down and then come back a win. It's just a pound. It makes a lot of money if it comes up. My main um, reason for having this is quite often you, a fancy team could go down, especially if um, the fancy team is away from home. So I fancy the team Birmingham. So basically it's a pound treble. Birmingham to win coming from behind is nine to one. This is with Scott. Uh, no, no, it isn't. It's with bet three, six, five. Mansfield to win coming from behind. I know they're not away, they're at home, but quite often Mansfield will, will go down. All, especially last season they used to. They're having a good season this season. Obviously they had a good season last season because they got promoted. But a lot of the time last season they used to go a goal behind. And then finally Walsall to win coming from behind. That makes quite a lot of money. It's, for a pound it makes £900. If we've got a couple of our teams go behind <clears throat> and then we've got every chance because We've got a chance because the favourite may at least score to make it level. And then we've got every chance. What I'm saying is, if we get a, into a position where we go a goal behind in two, even all the matches, right, we've then got a chance. Even though the cash out might go down, you've then got the favourite trying to get goals back. Um, and then let's say we get one team or two teams come back, you're going to get, a, should get a very nice cash out. I know I'm clutching at straws a bit, but it's an interesting bet really because, well, I can't give you the because. I think it's an interesting bet. So this is the main football bet. This is where we couldn't care less who goes in front or behind generally because this is the bet where it eliminates your, you throwing your, your um, slip in the bin after 10 minutes when normally you, or quite often your team goes two goals behind. Let me just scroll to the bottom because... So, <clears throat> it's the same matches. It's a £7 treble over two and a half goals treble. So, the matches in all the bets are Lincoln City versus... Uh, no, it isn't. Lincoln City versus Birmingham over two and a half goals. Grimsby versus Walsall over two and a half goals. So, you click on the over two and a half goals in both the matches... And then the final one you need to add to the bet slip is Mansfield and Stevenage over two and a half goals. For £7, that returns £50, and that definitely pays for the day. So if your over two and a half goals treble comes up, it's definitely a paid for day. And I, there's some profit, but not as much profit as obviously because I've played, played quite a few bets today. And the final one is it's the bit of the jackpot one. I used to have the over four and a half goals, but. Um, you can imagine how rarely that happens. I think it's happened twice. Um, we had a £1,500 return when I cashed out on, I think it was, I cashed out on £900 and there were five minutes to go and we got the bet up in the end, but I cashed out with, I cashed up with either £800, 800 or £900. Um, but anyway, this is this is £2 over three and a half goals treble. Same matches, I'm the, I'm the same just for the sake of it. Lincoln City versus Birmingham. Mansfield versus Stevenage and Grimsby versus Warsaw, and that returns for two pound seventy pound. Um, I don't think these are really extreme bets. The the, the, the pound to come from behind is, is probably a bit different, but um, yeah. So I will add this to the main video uh, um, for those of you that haven't seen the main video. So I wish you the very best of luck, Charlie Winters. We're all in, over and out. Cheers, mate.